What's up, you guys? Sean Ross at Fightful here with a name you know, the legend, Lou Fisto. How you doing? I'm pretty good, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Considering everything, it's... Um... Uh, it's been a, a couple of interesting days, let's say. <laughs> it, it has been. I mean, we'll, we'll jump right into it. Yeah. You, there were a lot of people who took note of a Twitter or a tweet that went viral. Uh, over 600,000 views as I look at it now. With a cute little Willy Wonka gif on it. It says, it's cute how people blame booking for a bad women's division. Talent with too much power. Talent denigrating each other. Talent trash talking potential employees so they never get in as soon as they walk in it starts here and you signed it the one you call an effing french canadian asshole so uh to to sort of highlight what what little i know about this people had asked me on a recent q a show had you heard anything like this and i said yes but i don't know the who's i don't know you know necessarily where how anything like that and you are open to speaking about it, and I think the world is, is very interested in, in what you have to say about it. I actually um, don't know where to start, but it's, I can say it's really something that's been bothering me for a while. Uh, it's been over a year that I, I had that um, dark match at AEW, and there's so many things that happened that night, and things that I've heard from other women that are working there that had like tryouts there, worked as extras, as well as men who are currently employed. And of course, I know people want names and everything, but I'm willing to give the names of people involved in my story. But of course, if anybody did confine in me in something, I can share the story. But out of respect, I'm not going to share the name of someone who doesn't want to lose the job or is looking for a job so that's that's for sure that uh, if they trusted me enough to say hey you can tell it but not the name i'm i'm not going to do it um uh, where to start um so i guess i guess i'll go with my story of how i got there and it's it's it might be pretty long but then after um we 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 i guess we can discuss and uh if you have questions along sure. the way, because it's a long story. <laughs> um, and so WrestleCon uh, in Dallas, uh, QT Marshall is sitting right in front of me. And I did send him some messages on Twitter before. And one of his questions was like, oh, do you have a visa to, to come for, you know, uh, the extras, the dark or whatever? And I did not at this moment. <laughs> So he's sitting in front of me. It's like, I'm going to sit up and act, you know, and actually go say hi in, in, in person, just not a, like a Twitter. And um, that's where he tells me, um, it's funny that you come to see me. I was thinking about you. We're looking for a female coach. Is that something that would be interesting for you? I'm like, absolutely. As much as I do love wrestling, one of the things I love the most is actually being, um, they use the word coach, but I, I, I'm i more of a, I would say an agent. I love sitting down with, uh, you know, the, the young generation, the girls or whatever, even people of my experience. I just love setting up matches, making sure that everything is established. Um, you know, the heel, the face, the, the, the psychology of it. What's the story you want to tell and where you're going to go after. That's really one of the things I love the most. So, of course, I got, you know, I was really excited. And he's like, would you be willing to move? I'm like, if there's a good salary, of course. I mean, I don't want to move for nothing. I just got a home. Like, I got, I bought my first house. Um, and then he goes like, can you be in Boston this Wednesday? And that's like the Saturday. And I'm like, oh, I, my job. But I just said like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I didn't <laughs> even think about it. It's like, I'll figure out the rest. So he's like, okay, you should get an email about it. Okay, so I go sit down to my my table. Right away, I get an email saying, hey, uh, Wednesday, this place, uh, Boston. And then I see, like, you need blood tests. And I'm like, there's no ways in two days that I, I can have blood tests that quick. I mean, um, there's places, like, where I could go in Quebec, where, but, I mean, I'm going to be home Monday, and then the... Tuesday, since Boston is like 
about eight, nine hours from where I live. I need to go the day before because the call, the call time's at one. Mm -hmm. So I go see him and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't, um, I, I can't get that that quick. And he's like, he's, uh, let me think about it. So I get another email, never mind the blood test, just show up. I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> and then I see COVID test. And they, they want like the big one. They don't want like the rapid test. I was like, oh, that's the same problem. Like it's easy to get a quick one, sure. but the those like performed by, uh, you know, the, the CRP or PCR. I don't know, like the, yeah, yeah the, this one is like, this one's really hard to get, especially in Canada. It was really hard at that moment. So I goes like, hey, <laughs> I can't, sorry. Get another email. Never mind the COVID test. Just show up. Be there. I want blah blah blah. Bring your gear. And um, the whole thing is to meet with Tony. Um, if if anything, I'm gonna wrestle. But the the really, I'm going there for a coaching job. Yeah. So you know, do my bookings in Dallas. Go home. Pack. Jump in my car. Um, so I get there, and. Um, I just, I park right next to the venue. I go in, I meet Sean Dean, really nice, blah, blah, blah. They give me my pass. And then they're like, um, okay, the extras are going to change. Um, it was like in the shower where the women were. Yeah. So I just sit around and I'm waiting because I really want to meet Tony. That's the thing. Like, okay, the match is cool, but I want to meet Tony because that coaching job. And I see the first person I see is Bunny. And I say, hey, uh, hi. And she looks at me. And she's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, well, I'm hoping to get something <laughs> like yeah. she goes away and she comes back a little bit later. She asks me the same question. And I'm like, uh, I'm I hope to have a coaching job. So I'm waiting. I don't it's a it's a little chaotic. People are running around. I don't really know what's going I go in the ladies' locker room and silence. <laughs> and there's Ruby, Bunny, and um, Tony sitting together on one side. They look at me, no words. I'm like, it feels really weird. But then I see Mercedes, uh, Mar Martina is happy to see me. Jade's doing her thing with I can't remember who. The rookies, but what I would say, young girls or young lions and and the Japanese are they're everything. Everybody's separated. It's, and then they're like, I get the same question. What are you doing here? Um, I I got called to be an extra and meet with Tony. And from there, it's just like, I don't know. It doesn't feel good right away. Um, I see QT. I'm like, I'm, why? When am I gonna meet him? Whatever. He's like, oh, I don't know. He's busy. Uh, walk around, mingle, blah, blah, blah. So I walk around, I'm watching Daniel, uh, uh, Brian Daniel, so um, teaching Jade. Uh, I got one wrestler, uh, a newish wrestler, I would say AW, she comes to see me. It's like, oh my God, you're here. I want to wrestle. Are you staying? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. She's like, I'm going to go ask the agents for you to wrestle me. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Then another one comes to see me. She's like, oh my God, you're here. Please tell me you're here to stay. I'm like, wow, is it that bad? She's like, I'm in a, like, like we need you. <laughs> then I'm I'm starting to, to kind of put things together. Thunder Rosa sitting on one side. Nobody's talking to her. There's one guy goes talk to her. I'm not, I don't know if it was an agent. I couldn't really see from afar. <laughs> But it's like everybody's like in their own little thing. And it just, I don't know. It's its its kind of weird, but I'm like, I'm not used to this environment. That's probably what it is. Uh, I'm waiting, no Tony, nothing. And um, I go backstage and um, I walk around, I meet Christian. Um, very nice. I go and I talk to Mark Henry, talks to me about the fact that he was in Canada uh, when he was training for powerlifting. And that's really cool. I meet Dustin Runnels and he's talking to me about all kinds of things, asked me where I trained or whatever. And um, he's talking to me about his daughter who's been married and it's really tough for a father, you know, to see that. 
And um, by this time, it's like really late. It's like almost like five o'clock. So I go see Mercedes. It's like, um, do we know what we're doing or do we, what's going on? She's like, we always know. We always know at the last minute. So time goes by, whatever, whatever. And then I see the car. And actually the first wrestler who said she wanted to wrestle me comes like, they won't let me. I'm like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> Cause I really like her. Um, and then I see, I end up in that um, six woman and they keep cutting her time too. Cause I see people go complaining everywhere because they're not on the car. They came to Boston for some reason. They're not wrestling. Uh, it's really chaotic. Something's going on with, um, I, I hear something about CM Punk, but I was like, I just saw him at catering. He was doing really nice. He was actually really nice to me. So I, I don't know. It's, it's really like, it feels like um like a high school um like um uh, not a high school gym but like everybody's like separate it, it, there's no unity for some reason and so they tell me i'm gonna have an entrance and i thought as an extra i would not so i run to my car get my jacket i go back in and um, I go to the restroom. I, as I am trying to, I, as I want to open up the door, I hear blah, blah, she something, something. I'm like, and I open the door and on the table, Ruby Soho is sitting with Dustin Runnels and they just shut up. Like, and they look at me and I'm like, okay. They were talking about me. That's for sure. Cause they're like, uh, and then she's like, I gotta go. And I go back to Dustin because that's the last one, last person I talked to. And that's where he goes. So all French Canadian people are fucking assholes, eh? And I'm like, excuse me, what? And then I'm like, what the? F I, he was nice to me like five minutes ago. He's like, yeah, apparently that's the way it goes. So I'm like, I had bad, a very bad relationship with Jacques Rougeau. He was like really, I can say even abusive to me, calling me to tell me I was fat to lose weight, whatever. So I'm like, oh, maybe he's like he had a bad experience with Jacques too. And he's like looking at me like differently. And the funny thing is player Uno walks by and he goes, hey, Uno, that's true. The French Canadians are fucking assholes, right? And Uno's like, um, I'm French Canadian. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. So they talk a little bit and I'm just still, I'm there, but I just leave. And I'm like, what the fuck that just happened? And I love Dustin Runnels. I even like wrote him messages, thanking him for being on, you know, online and that keep stepping thing. Cause mm -hmm. it was very inspiring. And I'm like, what the fuck? What just happened and then like I'm going in my head with the hell so I gotta get ready for my match now and I have to wrestle her so I get ready uh, I'm with them and one thing I notice is that sky blue is not saying a word they tell her what to do Anna Jay says like Oh, I could do this or whatever, but they asked them like, oh, uh, it will be your turn there. And I don't want to talk too much, like to put my input, because I realized that I'm the only one that's not signed in that freaking match. Why the hell am I there? At this point, I don't know. Yeah, for for those that don't know, it was Anna J, Ruby, mm -hmm. Soho, and Sky Blue against Lufisto, Emi Sakura, and the bunny. Yeah. So um they tell me I'm gonna start with sky blue it's like what do you want to do what what are your moves and she's like i'm like what do you want to do and it's like i'm like either she's the she's like bland as a person or she's not allowed to talk but it was it's like it was really like she didn't i don't know if she didn't understand why i was asking her her stuff but it was it just it's just weird i'm like what do you want to do and so we do we do this and then Ruby pretty much sets up the whole thing with Bunny. Emmy's just following. And she uh, at one point I'm doing a clothesline. I was like, I, I should probably go for a pin there. She's like, no, don't don't do a pin. 
I'm like, okay, just tag Amy. I'm like, oh, cool. And the finish will be, um, we're going to do something. And then Anna J is going to go bip you guys on the apron. And then I'm going to come get you for the finish one, two, three. And then I'm like, okay, that's fine. So do I go down? I stay up. He's like, no, 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 just stay there. The, the finish is coming. I was like, okay. So we go do the match. It is what it is. It's, it didn't go, it's not like a five-star match, but I think for the four minutes we had, it was, it was what it is. Um, so when we get to the finish, um, Anna J hits all of us. I stay there and I wait and nothing's happening. And they keep going. They do something else on the other corner. And I'm like, what the? F okay. Uh, but I'm waiting. They told me to stay. I'm, I'm like waiting. Um, go back in, finish one, two, three. We go backstage and they all like, they keep going and Dustin's right there. And he's like, what'd you do? Uh, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you made all those girls that are signed when you're not look really, really bad. It was terrible. I'm like, okay, uh, details. And he's like, you should have bumped on everything they did. And then I'm like, but everything they planned was for me to sell to the next one, for the other girl to sell to the tag, for me to give a clothesline and, and tag out and only tag back in. Like I have 40 seconds in there. So I'm like, sir, can you please give me like details of what I should have done better so I don't repeat it? He's like, well, when uh, Anna J bipped you on the apron, you should have fall outside. And now I'm like, okay. Thank you, sir. I see. And of course, everybody else left. Nobody's there when he's giving me those criticism. Billy Gunn's nearby and I look around and I'm like, can, can someone else tell me that I suck this bad. I need another opinion. He 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 was looking at me going like, oh. like I was disgusting. And now I'm like, they told me to stay on the fucking apron. And now I'm like, they, mm. and the, the, the thing that I was thinking about is there's a few girls that told me that had, they had like matches with, uh, Britt Baker or whatever, where they would go in the ring and they would change the match completely. Or if the girl forgot something, she would go, where are we? Silence. And of course the match would look bad. They would never be called again. And so I was like, and they got stiffed as well. So I was like, they didn't want to stiff me, but they make sure like to at least an agent, I look like a fucking idiot. So I even went around and asked some guys, like, did you watch the match? Did you watch the match? One of them told me, I did not, but I will. So I change. I'm waiting. I'm still, I'm like, I still, you know, there's still Tony. Okay. The, the match, forget about it. You're here for coaching. You're here for coaching. And um, I go to a, a wrestler I've known for a few years and he's like, so um, how was it? I'm like, well, it was short. He's like, yeah, uh, they don't really watch their, her matches here. He's like, I've been doing Chris Benoit moves for the past months and they don't, don't even know. I'm oh, like, wow. okay. I was like, yeah, they don't care. So I was like, where's the structure? He's like, eh, pretty much do what we want here. Or, and I'm not saying that in a good way. I'm like, okay. So I just sit down and I watch the show and I wait and I wait and I wait and... <clears throat> I see Sammy Guevara with his girlfriend. They go, um, actually, they were doing that before the show, going back in the car outside, coming back in, bucks running. It's like, again, chaotic. And there's literally people sitting at one point and then, and they talk shit to each other. I'm like, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm with fucking children. Do you mean like <laughs> confrontational or like playful? No, like, um, like they, somebody's talking shit on one side, the other guy's talking shit, but they, they don't talk shit to each other. Oh, they talk okay. about each other. So you're so witnessing like, the two sides yeah, of people like, talking about each other. And I'm like, do I, at this point with everything that happened, it's like, do I really want to be here? And I'm like, man, I would be good at, as a coach. Like, I'm, I know I'm good at that, but I'm like, Ugh. and it's, um, of course, I don't meet Tony. 
I don't see my opponents. They they they're, they completely vanished. What were and... you told anything about why you didn't meet Tony that night? Oh, apparently he was busy or something. Um, few like a few days after, I'm 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 like trying. I I email um Cutie uh, trying to see what's going on and what and you know do can I have comments? The wrestler that told me that would watch the match actually you know wrote and he's like. Uh, the match was okay. It wasn't like something great, but it, I think it went well. And now I'm thinking, well, apparently I was the absolute shit and I don't know what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he's like, I don't know why you didn't, you know, pin after the, the clothesline. I was like, I was told not to. <laughs> and then I just literally told him, I'm like, sorry, not that I want to throw somebody else on under the bus, but I didn't want to talk too much because I knew I was not signed at all. And the other girls were, and he's like, yeah, I understand that. But it wasn't you. It's like, you didn't have, like, you didn't have the opportunity to show what you can do. I was like, eh. and I'm like, um, do you think the finish looked bad? Cause I was standing there. And he's like, no, it, it, it's, I mean, it's, if I want to be nitpicky, maybe, but it's like not bad. So I'm like, okay, then why the hell? Um, so I, after that, I'm really having trouble getting paid. Um, the show was in April. I was able to get it by uh, in August. Um, sorry, July, and that's that's after I I asked uh, Dean, I asked QT, and then another woman, and they're like, "Oh, we sh we send it by mail." Uh, but there's a thing about the Canadian address, and I'm like. And I look at my, my WD-9, everything is okay. And I'm like, by the way, why the hell nobody asked me about my work visa? Like, I have a work visa and nobody asked me about it. I'm like, whatever. And then I give them my, my PayPal. And then they, oh, we sent it and it's not working. I'm like, well, another promoter just sent me money and it's working. So the lady was kind of upset, but finally I, I kind of got it. And after that, I tried to reach out to QT, never answered me. I tried to reach out to Dean, never answered me. When they came to Canada, I was like, let's try this. I just sent a message like, hey, I'd like to be an extra in Canada. Completely ghosted me, whether it's phone or Twitter or email, nothing. Like I don't, like not even worth an answer or no or nothing. <clears throat> and um yeah, so that was it. So it's a very long story to explain my, how it went for me. But the thing, what really got me mad about the thing with the booking. Yeah, the, there's no structure. The booking is like all over the place. Um, oh, I don't, sorry. I'm like, I don't know how to. To explain that, I <laughs> just just telling my story right now. It's like yeah, of course. Because I'm so, I'm so upset that I've I went there and I spend my money and everything that for this, and I'm like, you should have known better, especially like I don't know with with. Especially with Ruby, she when I was backstage at WWE at, at WrestleMania because I had tickets from Pat Patterson, and Conrad Seaman was right there, and Kimberly was res was working there, and Andrea, and we were all sitting together because they came to see me, and so was she. So Conrad Seaman comes and sits with us, and it's like, oh, I went to see the women's shows, and I mean Queen of Combat, that was the shit. We went to see Shimmer. Ah, we pretty much got what we wanted there. I'm like, the rest was like, ah, whatever. So Kimberly and Andrea are looking at the floor. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. So I was like, what? you're shitting on fucking Shimmer. I was like. So from that moment on, like, I've always had that. That problem with her. And I'm like, how the fuck can you throw them under the bus just to fuck what kiss ass? And the funny thing after he looks at me, he's like, oh, who are you? Uh, what's your name? I was like, hi, sir, I'm Jen. Nice to meet you. And he kind of figured out I was on that show. And he's like, well, I got to go. Yeah, I got to go too. And she left. So 
I mean, right away there was that thing, but I, I don't know if she ever thought I was going to talk about it. And um, yeah, and after, uh, <laughs> so um, she gets booked at IWS in, um, in Montreal and they want to book her against me. And I'm like, all right, let's see this. Two days before they announce our match, um, IWS is like freaking out. It's like, oh my God, we've got to change everything. We're sorry. It's something with AEW. Um, we we it 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 uh, involves like five people, blah, blah, blah on the card. We gotta do redo the card. And I'm like, okay, it's gonna be Ruby because of me and all the other girls, which makes five of us, are the reason why everything's fucked up. And of course, that what it is, they didn't want to tell me. But we're really like, she shows up and it's like, hi, how are you? Gives me a big hug. It's so nice to see you. I'm like, motherfucker. After everything and now like you think I don't know. I've seen this fucking behavior forever. And I mean, I'm telling my story and my experience just to for people to understand that there's that fucking the reason why this freaking um division doesn't work is the gatekeeping keeping of it the the it, it's not gonna get any better as long as somebody doesn't stand up because everybody's afraid to talk everybody doesn't want to say what i'm saying right now i myself even i'm like struggling right now but somebody has to say it unfortunately it's the 43 year old you know old lady that's doing it because nobody here's the thing in wrestling everybody's so afraid to lose their freaking jobs that they don't say anything and they accept things that should not be that somebody has a tryout and you make sure that they look bad and i'm not even you know talking about myself because i didn't look that bad i was told to following discussions and whatever the thing planned that happened but some girls like asking for guidance and make, you know, made sure that they look bad so they don't come back because they there's a genuine interest in them. And, you know, the 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 girls fighting within each other. Um, you know, I hear it all the time. My ship has sailed, and I'm I'm aware of that. One thing though is I love wrestling with all my heart. So if somebody wants to go out there and say I'm bitter. I'm just going to say, fuck you. I go out there every weekend. I love what I do. I've been to court to defend women's wrestling. Um, and the thing that I do not accept, and it's that's what's going on at AEW right now. Women are shitting on women when we should be like helping each other and lift each other up. And I'm sorry, if you're not good enough to be out there and prove that you can go, that you have to go through politics and people you know and people you're with and whatever, I, you don't belong in the sport. Like right now, it's it's filled with people who use wrestling to be, um, uh, to, to kind of like have that fame. And the, the ones that really fought hard for women to be seen as athletes, that we work together, that we, um, one of the problem, men are in charge of the women's division. Uh, honestly, let's, I'll be very honest. No, they don't care. They don't care. They will put their freaking friends in spots before the women. And if you stay up there because you're good in your comfort zone, it's not going to change. You need to stand up still today in 2023. You need to stand up. You need to speak your mind. Do it politely. But you can't have people running the whole thing with their friends, with their clique, and expecting women's wrestling to change. So And people give it time. And so it matters. Because it's not, it's, it's not going to change if you don't have people who are passionate about what women wrestling should be when it's just the people that are out there are people who want to be there, who have a certain power and it doesn't go with what's, what is the best product you could put up front and with who. Um, and honestly, when you look at the talent that they have in, in and out of the ring, 
you have Jerry Lynn, you have Christopher Daniels, Chris Hero just got in. Um, you got people like uh, Sarah Stock. You got, um, you know, the women, uh, Layla Hirsch, um, uh, Chris Statlander. I mean, Jamie Ader. There's so much talent, so, so much talent. Why is it not working? Well, it's it's not a question of booking because if a wrestler is good, is passionate, he's going to make fucking chicken salad out of chicken shit. I always think about Dusty Rhodes and the polka dots. He made that thing work. Like, and um, Mizdow, it could have been terrible, but he got himself over doing, you know, embracing it, working, being an awesome worker, being good, working with everybody, not telling them what to do. You work with weaknesses, you work with strength, you work together. You as a veteran, don't go, oh, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this because that's the way it works here. I, I know I'm going back and forth between so many things right now, but I think it shows like how chaotic that is. There's so many little problems that are not necessarily like, yes, it's booking related. Yes, it's someone that don't put their fucking pants on and say, you are talent. Please give me your ideas. I want to work with you. But don't tell me what to do. I'm the boss and I pay you. And I mean, if something you are you don't want to do, you're not comfortable, please never push your talent to do something they're not comfortable in doing. Wrestling someone they don't want to, they don't. That's that's like, that's creating more problems and injuries and you're not going to have a good product in the end on TV. You want things to work. And if it means that, hey, the, this person, this person, this person, you know, creates problem, fire them. You have what, 60 women out there who really wants to go up front, really wants to be on top, really wants to give you good matches. You're not using them because you got that core that wants to stay there and will do everything they want to stay there. So if like, for example, if Dustin sees this, reaches out, if Ruby sees this, reaches out, would you be open to having a conversation with them, making amends, anything of that nature? Um, like I said, I've, I've always loved, loved, loved Dustin Runnels uh, since Goldust. <laughs> uh, the, the first, like, Goldust, like, it was 93-94, the feud with Razor Ramon. It was still one of my favorites. I loved how it was such a strange character, but my god like he again he took this weird character and made it bigger than you know everything like he he was like i don't know like i don't even know how to describe it because he, he he kind of out of this world like when you look at a wrestler you either want to be angry in love um you know like weirded out or amazed um wrestling's about emotions and with him, like everything, yeah, was bigger. And ev uh, anyway, so um, yeah, like so many times I've wanted to reach out to him, especially like uh, he would write things like, uh, oh, be kind to people and you don't know what they're going through. And I'm like, I, I don't know how many times I wanted to reply on Twitter. I really wish you would have showed me the same kindness. Because what everything you're saying, I believe in too, and I'm not perfect, and I did things wrong in my past, and I will do again, and we all make mistakes, and I know when this goes out, it's like, oh, Lefisto, you did this, you did that. I know I'm human, whatever, but I don't think I deserve to be called a fucking French Canadian <laughs> asshole, and I don't think I, I was I, gonna say you are a French Canadian. You should I be am called French a French Canadian, Canadian, but we're nice people. Well, <laughs> Chuck Russo's an asshole, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> to, to be fair, multiple times French Canadians have approached me and said, "Hey, Sean Ross Sapp, you fucking guy," and I'm like, oh, it's "Well, a I know good where you're thing, from." Because if you we translate in French, we, we always. <laughs> we, 
as weird as it sounds, when we're happy, we we like we swear. Yeah, <laughs> we swear when we're happy, and we swear when we're absolutely mad. So, um, but I mean, yeah. I, I... So again, interpersonally speaking, I've had very limited experiences with Ruby. None, none bad. Obviously, we don't work together. I've reported on her career. You had competed against her in the past. Like you all had worked together years ago. Mm -hmm. I know that was the case before she went to WWE. Yeah. Yeah. And the first time, uh, I mean, it went really well. The second time, like both both matches were, I think, really good because we we had like only good comments. The promoter was really happy. The crowd was into it. The second one, um, uh my nose got broken and she already had a shoulder injury and i heard people say like oh you hurt her in that match and i'm like wait a second she was hurt before and i even asked her do you want anything else than the burning hammer and she's like it's already real bad so it doesn't matter it can't be worse so i was like okay and with the nose um it was a hit that came real quick it happens like it, it broke my nose and i know the only thing i said is after this hit my nose was completely messed up. There's nothing I could do with it. I was always able to like kind of replace it myself, but that was past that. And it's not because she mm. messed up my nose. It's because it's been broken so many times that at then it was like, it was over. But yeah, I, it's like, um, why would she say I injured her when everything was fine before? And then I saw after it was fine. And then when I got, it's when I got to the WWE and I, the shimmer comment happened with, with Conrad Seaman. And I was like, what? And then the, I opened the door in that conversation. And then the, that finish, it's like, um, I was nervous. Like I, I'm sure I have my faults in there. Uh, but one thing, I, like I know, I remember the match. I did not have anything where I didn't know what I was, what was next or whatever. But um, I don't know. It's it's something I've always like. Like I said, I've been thinking about forever. But I didn't want to get into drama. Um, I didn't want to get into argument. And I know by me coming forward and explaining that system now that's out there and the, what people told me and my own experience and everything. I know a lot of people are going to shit on me. Some are not going to talk to me anymore, but I, I feel it needed to be said. You can't, you can't go forward and talk about a women's revolution and, and because right now everybody's shitting on women's wrestling and too many women work so hard for us to be respected as athlete. And now it's going back because you're not putting the wrestling in front. It's all about being famous, being at the, you know, the, the top girl, whatever. If we all work together and it's good from top to bottom, then the ratings are going to go up. And cause there's interest in women's wrestling. You just see, um, I think it's, it was WWE a few weeks ago. Uh, the women's segment kind of went up because they're giving more time to the storylines. It's, and I mean, they're not perfect either. It's the same kind of sure. thing. I, I, I haven't been there, so I can't comment, but it's pretty much always the same that are at the top and, and there's no, or barely, you know, um, I don't know. I don't want, you know, I haven't been there, so I can't really comment. But as long as there's that mentality that um, there's, this group and then the rest is like whatever instead of all working together it's not going to change it's not going to be better um mm -hmm. there was that moment where you know shimmer was on top and then the nxt women and then i'm thinking about the knockouts also um when amazing kong was there with a feud with gail kim like it was really but now it's like it's it's going backwards again like no like Whatever, I'm not I'm not gonna get a job, but I'm not gonna have my 26 years of wrestling wasted on women that do not deserve to be there, not because they're not good, but because they're terrible human beings and they're narcissists and they only think about them and they do not think about women's wrestling as a whole. So whatever, you know, 
hate me, um, you know, talk shit. I'm ugly. I'm fat. I'm old. I didn't make it. I didn't whatever. I've heard them all, by the way. So pff, I don't give a damn. I don't care. Uh, that's the thing right now. I don't care anymore. One thing I will always care about, though, is that women, women wrestlers of today, like the ones that came after me and my generation, I don't want them to go through the same bullshit I had, like the politics, the abuse, the guys grabbing her asses back backstage and being screamed puppies and whore and thinking we're there just to, for for you know me and that women's wrestling suck women's wrestling sucks if you allow it to and by letting your talent that should not be in top or that shouldn't be in charge do what they're doing right now you're allowing women's wrestling to suck and that's where i like i draw the line so if I don't get booked anymore because of this, you know, whatever, but at least it, it, it's out there and that's what's going on with women's wrestling. You are destroying what women's wrestling should be and it's going backwards. It's going down. And with the talent that there is on the indies on, um, you know, on the bigger uh, promotions as well, everywhere around the world. No, this, this should not be happening. Uh, as we wrap up, without naming names, did anybody from AEW reach out to you after this tweet? Yes, someone did. Uh, just one. <laughs> he said, um, I want you to know that I wish you the very best in everything you set out to do. You're way too talented to uh, not do anything. And you're... Um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it was a very nice message saying like, you know what, you're doing the right thing, keep going. And that was it. But yeah, that's the only one I would even say that uh, before, even before the message, uh, since I've been there, uh, some people are not talking to me anymore because I don't know why, because they have a job there and I don't know, maybe they're not allowed. Who knows? Who knows at this point? Because <laughs> QT was like very nice to me and asked me to come by and down like he doesn't even talk to me but he he's gonna work with Jacques Rougeau who's anyway that's that's another story for another day but I mean you're working with people like that and you know what you're I don't know I think and it's as so human I'm beings it's yeah I'm assuming you never did have a conversation with Tony Khan throughout this process. Never. And is that something you would still be open to? Like even just dis just having a talk with him about the culture that you experienced in general, m much less like the potential of coaching or anything like that. The way it is now, like I don't, I don't want to go there as an extra, as a coach, as a wrestler. Um, I don't need this in my life. <laughs> I don't. <clears throat> On the indies, I'm free to pick my opponents to go where I want. Um, you know, people like ICW, GCW, IWS, um, Beyond Wrestling, they treat me um, wonderfully. Uh, and it, I got I got good relationships with them. I work with people that are nice, that that want to do good, that has the same they have the same mission of having the best match possible. Um, would I talk to Tony? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think Tony is such a big wrestling fan. And we, we've seen it that he's a family man as well. And he's really focused on doing the right thing. Um, but I think he's taking advantage of so bad. I wouldn't want to do that. Um, and I, I, I mean, would it change anything? Uh, I don't know, but you know what, there's a problem with, with your backstage. Uh, it's on the man's side too. People are making decisions you should be making. Uh, you should surround yourself with people that you trust and that wants what's best for your company, not them and their friends. Whether it's men or women, 
that's what you should be looking for. You are so passionate about everything you do when it comes to wrestling. You've been in love with wrestling for forever. You finally have this power within your hand to have, to create something big that is an alternative to WWE, that it's different, different style of wrestling. That's that's really what I was hoping and I was really excited about AEW when it, um, when it opened because I was like, it's it was different they would they were taking risks they were taking still do today like different kinds of mm. uh of matches but i just feel like everybody wants to do or everybody's doing what they do like all those hardcore matches even for women one show two show hardcore matches barely no build up sometimes build up online that people don't see like like i said like i think tony has the best intentions the best like love for wrestling but you got people out there that can help you again jerry lynn awesome guy you got christian you you know mercedes martinez for the women um there's people out there that can do the job very good that will do it for you not for them so that's probably what i would tell him anyway and yeah Man, I know this was uh, something you, you've held on to for a very, very long time. I appreciate you trusting us to to, to tell us all of this. Um, I mean, I know that the last week has been a, a pretty wild one in general. And uh, I think that people should know you're still kicking ass in the ring. You're still doing incredible stuff. I've, I've long really, really enjoyed your work. And uh, I know that you are a very humble person when it comes to that type of thing, but uh, you are a trailblazer. You are somebody that is has uh, paved the way for an awful lot of people. And not only that, you're still doing it. Uh, for those that that might like you know, not be f that familiar with the indie scene, go watch her stuff that, that she's done with Layla Hirsch. Go watch any right in Beyond Wrestling and Lufisto, and you're going to see something really, really great. Uh, go look at the the GCW matches from a couple weeks ago with Yatami. Like there are so many great things. Uh, that you have done in the ring and are still doing in the ring. And I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you for sacrificing your body, your time, your emotion, all that stuff. Uh, and let the people know where they can support you, where they can follow you, where they can keep up with you, where they can see your wild-ass tweets that you post here and there. <laughs> There's not too many of those, but when I when I get to that point, like I just like, whatever. At this point, I don't care anymore. Um Lufisto.com is really where you could get everything. Like all my links are there. Um, you can join like Twitter. My emails are always open. Lufisto.mail.com. If you have any comments, any more questions, because I know like, um, like this is kind of wild and out there. And like, there, there's so many things and I try to keep it short because it's, I, I try to keep kept these as short as I could, but it's already so long. But I'm always I'm always open to criticism. I'm always open to comments. Um, whether you like my matches or not, I read everything because that's the way uh, I could get better. Um, I'm not gonna unless you tell me something absolutely stupid or not true. Uh, I'm not gonna scream at you. Or whatever. I'm I I will probably have a discussion. Please send me like e like I said emails. Um, uh, a good women's division, a good wrestler will will take critiques, work with them, and make them better. Uh, some of them are really frustrating sometimes, I do admit, but you got to take a step back and, um, yeah, uh, like, work with that. If you tell me I'm fat and ugly, it's like, hey, whatever. Like, it's, it's not a con constructive criticism to me, so I might, like... Uh, or like I last week as a guy is like, oh, I don't know who you are, blah, blah, blah. So I just print screen as Twitter with 1000 people and mine with 47,000. It was stupid, but it was like, hey, stupid answer to a stupid question, st stupid comment. But um, yeah, reach out. Uh, I'm always there. Um, I'm always available to, to help people. Um, and uh, I've been thinking about, uh, I, I am not going to be an agent, <laughs> but I was thinking about like doing stuff where I watch matches and we watch it together mm -hmm. and we work together and because I, I just love it. So I've 
I uh, I got a microphone and I got a good camera <laughs> to do this. You do. But I'll figure out like what I want to do um after uh after what's going to happen now. Um I want to live day by day and since I lost my my grandma it's um she was a very strong woman and she always told me like even if technically it's the right thing to do if it's wrong stand up and speak up against it even if it costs you so i take her advice and a lot of people are gonna talk shit about me but this can't go on for mm. women's wrestling it can't so well i appreciate you so much for taking the time for for trusting us to to talk about this uh, i just appreciate it in general lufista thank you so much for taking the time thank you for allowing me until next time, guys, we're out. There is no product that we have promoted more on Fightful that I use while I'm awake than NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Uh, you guys have probably seen me anchored to my desk an awful lot for quite a while, and I've always got NordVPN on all my devices. That's because that's what NordVPN.com slash Fightful allows. You get the fastest VPN in the world on all your devices, on all your operating systems. It is so beneficial to have that versatility. Uh, here at home, I put it on my router just in case, and I put it on my phone, laptop, desktop, PC, and smart TV. That allows you to get all the benefits. The online threat protection, the ability to change your virtual location with just one click, the ability to, to use that NordPass password manager, the file encryption tool, all that good stuff on everything. Also, you can subscribe to all those overseas services I'm telling you all about, all with 24 seven tech support and a 30 day money back guarantee on top of an already amazing deal. Protect yourself on all your devices with NordVPN.com slash Fightful.